Hi everyone, it's Anon once again. I am currently working on a video dedicated to the Black Buck raids that happened during the Falklands or Malvinas War. But before that, I have to make a reference to the three strategic bombers used by the United Kingdom during the Cold War, known as the V-Force. You might be wondering, V-Force? That sounds like a rejected DC or Marvel superhero team. Well, it wasn't. The V-Force was the name of a group of bombers used by the British Royal Air Force, or RAF, during the Cold War. At the end of the Second World War, the world was divided. The Soviet Union was now the evil enemy of the Western world, and vice versa, of course. At the time, England had an extensive experience on strategic bombing missions. The pulverized cities of Germany are a good proof of that. But by 1950, England still had an obsolete bomber force based around the piston engine, Avro Lancaster and Lincoln bombers. The new Soviet MiG-15 jet fighter was a big concern and the purchase of second-hand American B-29s, named Washington's, to replace the previous bombers wasn't enough. Luckily, several British engineers managed to get their hands on a number of advanced secret German designs and started the development of new strategic high-speed bombers that could strike Moscow with nuclear bombs. They quickly built three different planes. The more conservative Vickers Valiant, the Delta Wing Avro Vulcan, and the crescent-shaped Swept Wing Handley Page Victor, my personal favorite of the three. There was also the black ship of the V-Force that no one talks about, the Short Sparrow, which was designed to a very conservative design in case the other planes failed to enter service. Only two were built for tests which is surprising for a nation that had been heavily bombed just a few years earlier by the Luftwaffe, as well as the cruise missile V-1 and ballistic missile V-2. The British managed to have all three V-plane designs operational at the same time, for a short period, and they even tested the Vulcan against another famous bomber plane that you might have heard of, the B-52 of Stratofortis, to see which one was the most accurate which the Vulcan easily won, technically. The V-bombers were also unique because they were so fast and maneuverable, being able to perform barrel rolls and other fighter-style maneuvers forbidden to the much larger B-52. They actually flew higher and faster than most Soviet fighters of that area. To reduce the effects of the nuclear bomb blasts, they were all at the time painted completely in white flash white. In 1960, an American U-2 spy plane was shot down flying over the Soviet Union by a surface-to-air missile. The new threat forced the RAF to train for a new type of mission, low-altitude infiltration to evade radar detection, and were now armed with nuclear cruise missiles. The planes were then camouflaged for this type of mission. However, this caused wing fatigue and corrosion, forcing the slightly older Valiant to be removed from service in 1965. The Victor also started to show wing fatigue, so the surviving planes were transformed into long-range tankers and reconnaissance platforms at the end of the 60s. They will continue on this role until 1993, refilling planes during the First Gulf War. Behind me we have the Henley Page Victor, which was one of the planes that was used to refill the Vulcan bomber that made the bombing attacks against the Stanley Air Base. Uh, at the Falklands. And this was one of the planes that was used and it's being restored as we speak here at Duxford, the museum uh, in England. I was looking for the plane outside but luckily I found it here at the restoration area and I'm really happy that they are recovering this wonderful and beautiful plane. The Vulcan remained the only strategic nuclear bomber of the RAF at the time. As the 70s came to an end, it was decided to remove the Vulcan from service in 1982. The plane had almost never been modernized, and by then the nuclear deterrent mission had already been taken over by the Royal Navy nuclear submarines equipped with Polaris missiles. Behind me we have one of the other Vulcans, a really impressive uh, plane with the size. And here in the museum, they even put a, a blue steel, I believe, missile under the plane, and we have some of the bombs 
that the plane was designed to carry. And let's go in here. And we are even able to see the bomb bay here as well. Very impressive. Wow. I'm just amazed. And now let's talk about the LEGO models that I made. The first one is the Vickers Valiant plane that we have here. This LEGO model only features an internal bomb bay. So, in here we have a very large bomb bay with enough room to fit a very large nuclear bomb. It's quite tail heavy, so it has a support here on the rear to keep it stable. The next plane is the Handley Page Victor, the plane that we have here. This one is the tanker version, so it has a refueling probe here on the rear and it doesn't feature any internal bomb bay, although it has enough room to fit one if needed. And if it's necessary, we can just remove the probe and just have it like this, like so. Next plane is the Avro Vulcan, the biggest of the planes that I made. This one has plenty of features which are quite interesting. For example, it has the air brakes here, which can be extended, as well as the flaps and the ailerons that can be controlled here on the rear. Underneath, it has a retractable landing gear, quite simple, but it works quite well. And it has the internal bomb bay, so it's possible to fit bombs inside like this. Another interesting thing is the idea that I got to keep the to mimic the idea of the camouflage here on the wings that also work quite well and it also adds strength to the overall model. I'm here at Duxford and I brought my Avro Vulcan Lego model and I have here the real plane just behind me so I can see the differences and perhaps perform some improvements on the real model and uh, and it's really amazing to have the, the model and the real plane just behind me. Built by the same designer who made Lancaster, the Vulcan, now obsolete, was removed from service shortly after the Falklands War. The B-52, on the other hand, has been widely upgraded over the years and it's still in service. However, the Vulcan was soon called for a final and daring mission. But for that you'll have to wait for my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications about my latest videos. For more info about my LEGO models, please visit my Flickr page by clicking on the link below. Thank you and see you next time!